Okay, we're going to talk to you a little bit about keeping vertebrae pests uh, out of your gardens or your ornamental plantings, landscape plantings. There's a lot of options out there. Some of them are physical uh, barrier control, like a net, and some of them are repellents that you, some you mix with water, some you don't, and of course, if you are a hunter, you could shoot them. But nowadays, there aren't that many hunters and we don't have a lot of time to sit out in a tree stand waiting for a bunny rabbit who's gonna eat up all our food. And there's a lot of laws about shooting firearms off within 500 feet of a road, all that kind of stuff. So you're not in a very good position as a hunter on your property, especially if you live in the suburbs. Uh, what we have I have used this product. There's a lot of products on the market. A lot of them carry, uh, the, they are carriers with stickers and they have sulfur. They have that rotten egg smell and that works. People use it. I've used it. Um, I've also used it. I found this one a couple years ago, Repelex. Um, this one smells like rotting sewage when you first put it out because it is, one of the main ingredients is dried blood. Uh, let's see if it lists them all. Dry blood is the main ingredient, 25%. Then cinnamon oil, rosemary oil, garlic oil, and then a lot of other little things. Sticking agents, it has a sticking agent so it'll adhere to the plant. So if you can imagine decaying blood and garlic, that's what this smells like. Uh, one of my neighbors thought her septic had broken the first time I put this out. So it's pretty rough the first hour. Then after that it goes away. For humans but the deer and the rabbits can still smell it I've had a, um, I but you got to train the deer so first thing in the spring when when your flower gardens start popping up you put this out then they don't want to use that as their trail to forage um, what I've done this year is this year around the property decided not to have a real garden but just decided to throw a bunch of seeds all over the place like Johnny Appleseed, but I didn't plant any apple trees. I planted zucchini and pumpkins and um, watermelon, but I really didn't want to take care of them. I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm not the, the big farmer. What I really wanted to do was put them out and just see what would happen. Well, they took off and they're growing seven, eight feet wide now. And so far, I've been using the Repel-X about once every two weeks and nothing's eaten them. However, I've noticed my hostas are starting to get eaten. So I think once these pumpkins and zucchinis start getting um, fruit on them, that the deer and the chipmunks and the rabbits are gonna start eating the fruit. I don't think they're so into the foliage, but I'm pretty sure they'll eat the fruit because in the past I've had pumpkin plants where woodchucks and deer have eaten the pumpkins. So what I did this year, um, I was like, tried this netting. Now this is really good netting. It's a company called Stay Green. You can buy it at any of your big box stores. And the, the problem I had with this netting, it worked great. It's only seven feet by 100 feet, so it's plenty long enough, but it's not wide enough for the type of barrier I want. See, I'm trying to drape things. Um, and if you have sunflowers that are this high and you want to drape them, these aren't wide enough. So you, you'd have to sew them together. It worked when they were smaller, but I'll show you as we go around what happened. Um, these are indispensable, these little landscape pins. They're great. Uh, they're like miniature croquet thingies. Um, that, that's what's gonna hold your pins in. Then, so I wanted to get a bigger, more square net, and I couldn't find one anywhere. So I went on Amazon and this, somebody in China makes this green anti-bird net. But I don't, there's no instructions. It just comes like this in a box from China with a picture of some tomatoes and some black crows. You want to get a shot on that? So there are no instructions. This is it. So you have to figure out what to do. So we're going to figure out what to do. I do know that it is four meters by 10 meters, so roughly 13 feet by 30 feet, roughly, which will work for me if, look at 
Look at this. Oh, so it's just one big roll. Hmm. Kind of Christmassy. Or maybe Eastery. This looks like it's going to be a real pain in the neck to use. So I'm going to do some net casting. And cameraman, why don't you stop for a minute and help me straighten this out. So we had some dirt here that was left over from some landscaping. And in the fall, we're going to cover this area uh, and then reseed it. But it's too hot. There's no sense in reseeding it this time of year. So the dirt was there, so I threw some pumpkin seeds in. I think. They might have been zucchini. I can't remember anymore. But whatever they are, they're bigger and they're green and they're growing like crazy. So I thought the seven foot wide initially would be good enough to keep predators away. But it grew beyond seven feet wide, as you can see. So now I'm going to have to remove the seven foot wide netting. I mean, you could use the seven foot wide netting, but you'd have to make a lot of patchwork. Cut up a lot of pieces. And I'm not into that. I want one big zone. I can control. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up some stakes here and try to drape that green stuff. Okay? So I'm going to show you why a seven foot wide net really isn't going to work for this. For instance, right here I've got, just from this stake to this stake, I've already got five feet. But I know I want this to come down. Uh, I want this to come down at an angle of about here. So that's six, seven feet there. Now I can figure my angle is going to be about the same on all four of those. So what did I have? Six feet or five? Five. Five, seven, and seven. So right now I need seven, twelve, I need nineteen feet across. And then this way. Five, it'll probably be five. We're gonna cut this one short because of the tree. Five, five, and five, 15. So even that net we got is 30 by 13. So even that's gonna be a little short, but it's the biggest one I could find. So we're gonna go cut it. What are we gonna cut it at? 15 by seven, five, and seven. 15 by 19, we're gonna cut it. So we're going to go cut it 15 by 19. See how we do this way, right? So I'm good. You want to come in more? Put it. I got the first one. So fortunately for us, the people in China that made this stuff measured it 4 meters by 10 meters, but either they weren't measuring it right or they were really generous because the width of it really wasn't uh, four meters, which is approximately 13 feet. It was more like 19 feet. So we're in good shape. These bamboo things, you want to cut the top a little and rough it up. That way, these coils, the net will have a place to grab. Otherwise, it'll just slide right down. So I'm going to see like this. This one's just sliding right down. So I'm going to cut the top a little bit. Just rough it up. You can hit it with a hammer or something. You don't need to do much. Just rough it up and you you can see now there's places for that to catch. And the thing is, is this where I want it to catch? I don't know. Yes, right here is good. I want to catch right here. Okay. Now, I don't need this grass here. So, I'm going to pull it out and throw it away. Less competition for the pumpkins. And this weed. This is a tree. Okay. A couple more. And some of these have some sharp spines in them. Ouch. Not sure what they are, but they hurt. Okay. Now we need clips. Happen to take a few from the last one. 
and we'll stretch this out. Just get a rough idea of where we want them. Anticipating several more feet of growth. One of the things about the net, even if, say, something like a rabbit or a deer might want to crawl under it, as soon as they start touching it and getting tangled up in it, even if there's holes, they don't want to mess around with it because it's, it, it, it makes them nervous. They're, they get caught just a little. They're not going to go in there and feed. But we still want to put down as many of these pins as is feasible. And it also makes your neighbors wonder what you're doing, and that's important. Okay, so we're gonna just look for obvious holes. Remember, they're not gonna, I like to come over here, I wanna show you something if you bring the camera around. We like to wrap it and wrap it up a little bit. Make it so that if a, Imagine a rabbit going in there. If he gets his, his toenails caught on it, he's not going to want to get in there. Birds are definitely going to freak out. This is actually closer to a bird netting. You can see, I'm going to draw all the slack in, which also makes it messier for the animal to go in. And if, if these plants, whatever they are, decide they want to grow out further, we can just let go of some of that slack and they will follow. I think they're gonna grow right out this side. We're showing you the whole thing because, just to give you an idea, the kind of time it's gonna take, not really a lot of time at all. When you consider you're protecting whatever landscape. And if you know the sculptor Christo, get a shot from back there about 10 feet. One of my favorite sculptors is Christo. And if you don't know who that is, you can look him up and tell me what you think. Uh, he does landscape sculptures. You need a lot of these pins though. If you think you need one bag, buy two because I bought one bag, and now I ended up buying three altogether. It wasn't enough. It's very sticky stuff. Not sticky like glue. It's just sticky to work with. And you can imagine that a bird or an animal isn't going to want to mess with it, trying to crawl around it. It's going to get caught. It's going to get caught in their toenails, in their teeth, their ears, whatever. And now we've protected our pumpkins for hopefully the rest of the season. If you, and if you notice, we can draw this out even further. And if they go much beyond that, then they're just gonna sacrifice themselves because that's all the netting I'm buying for a bunch of pumpkins. Um, we do have a high spot here. Put that one in. And that should do it. Oh uh, no. So you gotta take a walk around and look, cameraman. You'll see we have some pretty obvious openings in a couple places we don't want to keep. Like right here. This is pretty obvious. The rest of it's not bad. We'll deter them with that. And that. Okay. Now they should go unharassed. They will be unharassed by birds, deer, and funny rabbits. Although woodchucks, which we don't have on this property, will probably 
burrow under this, but let's not worry about them right now. We have a 22 for that. So now we've covered um, our plantings with the netting. That'll keep most pests away. Uh, we're going to talk now a little bit about putting out a... This is not really a chemical. It's a naturally occurring uh, ingredients. These are the minimum risk ingredients under the EPA guidelines for minimum risk pesticides. So they don't, they're not registered as pesticides, though you can use them in a pesticidal manner. However, in a lot of states, remember, if you do that on your own house, it's not a commercial application. But even if you take a minimum risk pesticide and you go to another person's property and you start spraying it around, that's a commercial application. So keep that in mind. Um, this product, the manufacturer of this product suggests that you use about one part Repel-X to seven parts water. I've used this little container here several times. I can tell you right now, if you do not clean this container, triple rinse it, even with a little soap, every time you use it, you'll be throwing it away because this stuff, can you get a shot of this stuff? This stuff dries in there. It will dry out and it will clog that sprayer. And these are little cheap little handheld sprayers. They're not, you know, I mean, they do the job. They're perfect for this. But if you leave it dry in there, it's over. Or if you don't even clean it out, it's over. You'll have to throw it away because what happens is the, the mechanics inside here, which you can't get to and clean, that's where this stuff is going to catch. I just wanted to point out, um, there's a lot of little things in here that stop the blood from being as thick as it could be and drying really in clumps. So the other ingredients are canola oil, right? Uh, potassium sorbate, sodium chloride and water. Basically, that's a soap. So there's an emulsifier in here that kind of keeps it. You got to shake it though, it'll settle down on the bottom. But when you put it in here, and I got a little spill on the side, you do not want that on your fingers because it will smell even after a shower. So we'll put this in here, make sure the top screwed on really tight. And shake it up good, away, away from you, not facing you, just in case. And let's go over to where you can see, I don't know if you can see, the red really comes out when you start to dilute it. Is there a smell sensor on that camera? No, okay. Well, people will just have to get it and try it themselves. So let's go over to the section that we just uh, guarded with net. So we've got our dry blood in here and it's a single use container. We're gonna use it all today. Now, we don't really need it here, but I just wanna give you an idea. I think it's a good idea in my mind, and that's a dangerous place to be sometimes. I'm gonna put a little bit of this around the edges. Let's just let's just let our furry little friends know this is not a place for them. Okay? Now we're gonna go check out some other plants. Okay, so these are some hostas. They've been here for about five years now, and I bought a product made by the same company, Repelex. It, um, it's capsaicin, a really hot pepper in a granular form. And they claim that if you put it, you know, when the plant's first coming up, follow the label, water it in, that capsaicin is taken up through the plant. It's systemic and it makes the plant too hot for the deer to eat. It worked. However, in the very beginning, you can see there was some chewing done here, but the, it, the stuff hadn't gone up into the plant yet. So the deer came back, how do I know? Well, they ate all the flowers off, see? They didn't get down to this one, but all the top flowers were eaten. But normally the deer here would eat all of this foliage right down to a nub. They wouldn't leave any of it and they would come back every year and totally destroy it. And eventually the hostas won't grow back. So that worked, but it didn't protect the flowers. So I, I know now that if I'm going to use the Repel-X uh, granules that are systemic to the plant, I'm also going to have to come over and do a little bit of this. 
to keep the deer away. So if you'll see here, the lilies, come on right through the, right through this area. We're gonna walk up. To keep this area wild, it's a, a place for pollinators to congregate all year. Now normally that was sprayed, see those tiger lilies were sprayed with uh, Repel-X and they were able to mature, nothing bothered them uh, because deer any other year that they weren't sprayed they would eat them all. Over here I'll show you what they really like. These pods are what the deer are going for. So if you can get out in time, watch what you're doing and hit those pods, you're going to have beautiful lilies. If if too much time goes by and you didn't spray those pods, they're just gonna come and mow them right down. Now these plants, um, we were going to, we had netting on them, but they're not growing that fast. And you can see they need water, so we'll water them right after this. But I'm just gonna put a little bit of this on. Now you have to be careful. You don't soak them with this because it's very thick. It's got a sticking agent in it and you don't want to cover the whole leaf because it's not going to be able to complete photosynthesis and give energy to itself. So just a little around the base, hit a couple of them, that's plenty. That's going to stay there for a week or two, no problem. And we're going to see, we'll be checking on this throughout the year. We'll come back every couple weeks or so and make sure that this is doing its job. Over here we have another bunch of stuff growing. Again, it's either pumpkins or zucchini. I don't know which anymore. I just put a bunch of seeds in the ground. We're just trying to make use of all the edges of the property, the ecotone areas, and see what happens. Um, it's more of an experiment than anything, but it also gives me the opportunity to use products like Repel-X and Eugenol and netting so that we can see how these things work in real life situations. So you can see we've gone around the property and we've treated all the areas we don't want the deer to, to, to eat. But there's, there's a little bit left in this. Now, if I don't clean this sprayer, and again, they're, they're like $2.99 or something. But the problem is they're $2.99, right? I mean, who wants to throw money away? Secondly, if you only have one and it's $2.99, it really doesn't matter. If it doesn't work the next time you want to use it. And I've run into that a lot. It took me a long time to get my act together and actually clean this, these, these really cheap little sprayers. I, I didn't use to clean them, but now I clean them. I've had this one for three years and it keeps working perfectly. So you want to... Uh Just dry blood. We're going to stop there. Now we've got some diluted Repel-X in there. So we're gonna go over, I got a golden mop over here. And we'll just make sure we run it. See, there's, there's a lot of the deer blood still in the system. So this will be good, it's not, it's gonna, repel things from this tree, this ornamental, and at the same time, clean the sprayer. Now you can see, I don't know if you can see, the spray is coming out clear now. Is that show? Mm -hmm. So you're really, just a little bit of a stink, <laughs> okay? But not enough to cause damage to the sprayer. So then I usually, then I'm gonna dump this out. Then come back over here. I'm going to fill it up again. The reason I'm doing this is because whenever I need this thing, the hose, I always leave a little bit so I can put about a seventh of Repel-X in there. Now I've got nice warm water this summer. It's going to be in there. And I don't have to go find the hose, fill this up again. All I have to do is pour my concentrate in there and I'm ready to go. So it's just a minor thing. Hi everybody. So uh, a couple months ago, we put out some netting for birds, rodents, deer, anything that would come in and destroy our vegetables here. And we just planted this, these seeds out and uh, really didn't take care of anything. We let it grow up. If you'll see, it's a green netting we got from China, the bamboo stalks, the cup placed in. But it worked because if you'll notice, 
we have a pumpkin. So this fall we're going to be able to carve a pumpkin and have a jack-o'-lantern. Now, uh, was all this work worth having one pumpkin? I don't know. That depends on the person. But it will work on a larger scale, certainly work on your garden, whatever that might be. If you come over here, you can see it kept growing out. And this pumpkin plant just doesn't want to give up. So it's, it came out from the side and it's gone all the way out here about us, ah, close to 20 feet. And it's still growing. And we have one little outlier over here. So we're gonna have another pumpkin right there and he's not protected so what will probably happen is that pumpkin will probably get eaten by oh a squirrel or a deer or something but what i might do is just put some netting over that one pumpkin and see if they leave it alone but anyway that's how it worked um it worked fine it kept it kept all the rodents away so um, it's a good idea if you want to have a small garden to use exclusion instead of using a pesticide Hi, I'm Kevin Hurley, the owner of Pest Ed. Thank you for watching our videos, and we hope that you subscribe, because we're going to have a lot more videos coming up, and we'd appreciate your input if there's anything you'd like to see.